Yeah. Awesome. So full house. Great. All right. Well, well I well, think we're good to go then, Karen. Okay. All right. Well, let's uh, let's kick this party off then. Hi, everybody. I'm Karen Hendrickson. Uh, I am the senior student manager, uh, or student, uh, the senior manager for high school in Kyoto, uh, which will be your new home in just over um, a month, a month and a few hours, which is super exciting. Uh, I want to tell you very quickly that I just uh, celebrated my Japan anniversary. That's the first time I ever came to Japan, March 10th, 1984, 40 years ago. So someday, 40 years from now, you all are going to be saying, oh, yeah, I lived in Japan 40 years ago and might even be living in Japan 40 years from now. Who knows? Anyway, that's me. Let me pass it on to uh, my colleague, Sayaka-san. Hi. Sorry, so hold on. introduce <laughs> yourself if you don't yes. mind. Sorry. Let me see. Hello. I'm Sayaka. I'm the high school coordinator in Japan. And I, well, I lived in the U.S. for um, over 13 years. So that's how I uh, know about America. And I think I know like how like students feel like, like about living in, uh, living abroad. So yeah, you can ask me any questions that you might have, like while you are in Japan. And then I'll do my best to support you all. Thank you. All right, the, the CIE staff, do you want to quick say who you are? And then we'll, we'll uh, the, the main feature will be the students after y'all. Yeah, I can start. I am Miga. I actually think I work with like all of the students here, except for Alex, so. Everyone here has um, chatted with me a bit. Nice to see you all. Rachel, I will hand it over to you next. Hey guys, my name is Rachel. Um, I work with the students from the East Coast, so I unfortunately haven't had the pleasure to uh, chat with you for the past couple months, but nevertheless, here to support. And throughout this, if you guys have any questions that pop up, if you want to just write them in the chat, uh, we can answer that throughout the session, or also you can hold that to the end as well if you'd rather just unmute your microphone. Hi everyone, I'm Raquel. I've been working for CIA for 18 years. Um, I'm now based, based in the US, but I work in, in the Spain um, in Seville for uh, eight years. And I work closely with Rachel and Miga, and there's one more coordinator. We divided the US in three territories. Emily cannot be here today because she told us she's celebrating her 90, her grandma's 95th birthday. So I think I was like, okay, that's a very good excuse not to be in this meeting today. So anyway, welcome everybody. Cool. Uh, Alex, you want to start? It, uh, just we'll go down uh, the line. I see. Yeah, just uh, Alex, why don't you start and then you can tag somebody else. Hello, I'm Alex. Uh, I don't know what I should say. Uh, I am a junior in high school. I am in Dallas, Texas. And uh, I'm really excited. Mm. Uh, yeah. So, whoever would be, I don't know, Anna? <laughs> Uh, hi, my name is Anna. I live, oh, I'm a junior in high school. I live in San Francisco, Bay Area, California. Um, I'm also really excited to study abroad. Um, the next on my list is Stella. Um, I'm Stella. I'm a sophomore in high school. I'm from San Diego, California. And I mean, like anyone else, I'm excited to study abroad and see new things. Um, so the next on my list is Carolina. <laughs> Hi, I'm Carolina. I'm a sophomore in high school right now. I live in Seattle, Washington, and I'm also really excited to go to Japan. 
Excellent. Good. You all passed that test. If somebody had said that you were not excited, then we might have something to be concerned about. But you might also be very nervous. That's totally normal. We're going to try to give you some information now to help you feel less uh, nervous. Uh, and at the end, yeah, we'll have lots of time for questions. So what I want to do is try to talk fast. If you guys can listen fast and that will leave as much time at the end for questions as possible. OK. All right, uh, so first let me make sure that all y'all can see the slides. Okay, cool. All right, so this is uh, Baxter and uh, oh, who was there? Um, Baxter and Meredith, um, who were studying at Otani. And uh, a couple of you guys are going to be going to Otani, but this is going to be you very shortly. Um, they were here uh, last year. So well, congratulations. It's a Georgian, actually. Oh, Georgia, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, you're right. Um, Meredith was at Yamashiro. Um, so anyway, uh, welcome to everybody today and uh, uh, welcome in advance to Japan and congratulations uh, for being part of this program. And congratulations for uh, getting your parents uh, also to agree to, to send you here. We're really um, thankful to them as well. Uh, anyway, here's our agenda in in this order, perhaps. Again, I'm going to talk really fast. I uh, want to get you, uh, give you an opportunity to know each other, uh, give you some information that will help, um, tell you a little bit about CIE and CI Kyoto, where you're coming in terms of Japan, give you some information about orientation, arrival, and things that you will be doing once you get here, tasks, um, talk to you a little bit about school, talk to you a little bit about homestay, uh, give you some information about our excursions and activities, talk with you a little bit about health and safety, although most of that stuff will be covered once you get here in Japan, get here to Japan, uh, give you a bit of information about expectations uh, and give you a list of a to do list of things to do before you leave. And then just a couple more last minute things I want to put at the end so that they stick in your brain and then have time for questions. So uh, CI Kyoto is a staff, a permanent staff of eight members. We run uh, programs for high school as and college uh, students. As our shortest programs are a week long, sometimes for college students, our longer our longest program are the academic year programs, like the one that you all are coming on. Uh, so Sayakasan and I are the high school and gap team, and then this is the college team, and sitting at the top of all of us uh, is Connor Sensei, our center director, and you'll notice that he is vastly outnumbered by females. Uh, we also have some temporary staff, by the way, that you may or may not see if you come to the office because we're gearing up for our major summer program. Uh, anyway, this is CIE Kyoto, and we were established in 2019, uh, opened up had a couple months of, of students coming to our programs and then it had to close immediately because of COVID. Uh, but we opened, we reopened and we're going stronger than ever. As you see, 500 students every year. We're actually looking at uh, up to even 800, 900 students going forward. Uh, we're a very small uh, office, but we handle a lot of students. Um, I mentioned this earlier. Uh, I mentioned that we also run college and uh, high school programs. You might see some of the college students too if you come to the office. And then we have various uh, programs for high school students as well. And we are located in a wonderful location. It is in the heart of uh, Kyoto, all kinds of fun cafes and boutiques and cake shops nearby. It's really hand handy in terms of public transportation. Um, Nijo Castle, which is a World Heritage Site, is just down the street from us, about 20 minutes walk. You probably won't come to the office that much, but uh, you will be there for orientation. And then if you have needs beyond that, you can always find us there. So y'all probably know where Japan is. Just want to point this out, though. This is Japan. This is Tokyo. And we are about two and a half hours south of Tokyo in Kyoto here. We do have a center in Tokyo, a Tokyo center outside of the summer program that they run for high school kids. All of their programs are for college. 
So uh, you probably have heard about Kyoto before. Um, the first time I went to Kyoto back in high school, like y'all are, I really thought it was going to be stepping back in time and people were going to be dressed in old clothing and, you know, stuff like that. It's not like that at all. Um, it's a very modern and yet traditional city, and you'll see both sides of that. So I put some photos on here. If you get a hankering for, you know, American fast food, you can find that, but you can also find traditional Japanese food. Um, Anything that you need to buy, you can pretty much buy in Kyoto or order online. But again, you can step back in time a bit by visiting some of those temples, shrines, castles, etc. I don't want to tell you too much about Kyoto because I want to uh, give you the opportunity to uh, experiencing experience it yourself. But just very quickly, give me, you know, if I say Kyoto, what is the first word that pops into your mind? Just unmute your mic, mic and shout it out. Traditional. Okay. Nature. Um, ah. There's a gate Sorry, district Alec? there. Yes. Alec, go ahead. Temples. Okay, cool. Did everybody say something? I think I might have only heard three people. Oh, no, I, I think it, everybody said, yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. All right. Yeah. Um, so all of those things are true. All of those things and more. Um, so uh, y'all are probably um, anxious to know about your visas. I'm going to let Sayaka-san talk about this a little bit more because she is the person that's generally in charge of that. So I'll just give you the bullet points. And Sayaka-san, can you please explain about visa stuff? Yes, uh, so they are with the in immigration right now, and so they are still in review at the, as of today. So they, they haven't really told me that, that they have the COEs ready yet. So, but as soon as I received COEs from um, the our legal consultants, then I'll send you guys. And then so you can take them to uh, your immigration office, your, your house, then, that's how you get your visa. And then you should have it on time this time. So you shouldn't worry about it, but uh, um, yeah, I'll just um, contact you guys as soon as I receive the COE. So it's the digital COE. So basically it's kind of like a PDF um, COE. So you can show the PDF, like a printed version of the COE, or you can save it on your phone and then take it to your immigration. I think most of the immigration office can handle both versions. So, but you can ask your immigration office to see which one you have to take it to the immigration. Thank you. And uh, real important to make sure that you look up your immigration, your closest immigration office now so that you can plan ahead and not have to scramble once you get your COE. Uh, and most places will accept appointments um, rather than just drop in. Uh, and um, generally speaking, you can you, you can go to the office and show your COE, COE as, as Sayaka-san said. It's probably good to have a printed copy just in case, um, but you show your COE and then you can either go back and pick it up or you can arrange for it to be sent to you. But each immigration is, office is different, so, um, or I should say consulate. So um, please make sure and check with your nearby consulate. All right. Okay, so uh, when you arrive, um, we are going to have an orientation, and we're also going to have a couple uh, cultural activities for you. Um, this is Kitano Tenmangu Shrine. We'll go there, and we're also going to do some traditional um, tie dyeing. Uh, but before that, you'll arrive at the airport. Sayaka-san will be there uh, outside of the north exit. Uh, Kansai Airport's not that big, so if you can't can't find Sayaka-san right away, just walk back and forth and Sayaka-san will have a uh, sign, I'm sure. And Sayaka-san, I think you have a um, CIE polo shirt now, so uh, you can look for that as well. Um, and then you'll be taking the train to the hotel at which you'll stay for the first night. Uh, orientation happens over two days. Again, there'll be some cultural activities in there as well, uh, including some lunches for us. And I said that earlier, and a tech check. So we'll make sure that you can 
access Canvas will make sure that you can um, get an, what's called an ENS, that's an emergency notification uh, that comes on your phone. And we'll talk to about the phones in a minute. Uh, we'll make sure that you can um, uh, use WhatsApp and stuff like that. And we'll help you, if you haven't already done it, we'll help you download Line on your phones. Uh, and then uh, you get to meet your homestay family. And uh, Sayaka san, do you have an update on homestay stuff from? Actually, let me come back to you on that in just a second when we talk about homestay families. Um, so things that we are going to do once you, or things that you need to do once you get to Japan, these are really, really, really crucial things. Within 14 days of arrival, you need to do some registrations. Your homestay families will help you do this. When you arrive in Japan, they'll give you uh, what's called a registration uh, card, a Zaidu card. And um, it'll have your photo on it and it'll have your um, uh, your status of your visa and so on. But it will not be printed with your address. What you need to do is you need to go to the ward or city office closest to your homestay and they will print your well, you register and then they print your address on your Zaidu card. And you have to do this within 14 days. Um, that's the residency part. Then you also need to sign up for Japanese National Health Insurance. And this is a required thing for all students on student visas. And it it's a great deal. You're going to pay about 1,500 yen per month. That's the price of like a dinner, basically, in Japan. And you can get reimbursed by, C, uh, by CIEE for that, but you have to keep all your paperwork. And then you submit that for reimbursement at the end of your program. Oh, by the way, um, I should also tell you national health insurance, what happens is you you pay uh, 1,500 yen approximately per month, as I said, make sure to tell them that you're a student and then they will send you kind of a book of coupons and you take a coupon, uh, the coupon for each month to the kombini, the convenience store, and you pay at the kombini. It's super convenient as the name convenience store implies. Uh, but you need to also remember to do that every month. And uh, then when you leave Japan, you'll exit the health insurance system. We'll tell you more about that at, at orientation. So I'm going to pass it on to Sayaka-san to talk about the schools a little bit. Let's um, call up the bullet points here. So Sayaka-san, if you don't mind. Yes. OK, so I guess you start with the Otani. OK, so. The Otani High School, I mean, both of both Otani and Ritsumei Kaoji, they are in located in um, Kyoto. So it's very close to us. So we can, you know, um, help you like even um, like, you know, uh, with the transportations and all that kind of stuff that you need. We can help you right away. Uh, Otani High School, it's the private high school in Kyoto. Um, who is going here? is um, that would be Carolina and Stella. Two students are going to Otani High School. It's a very good high school and your main contact at high school will be Hayashi Sensei. So you can um, ask for help if you need anything from if, um, in, within the school, you can ask Hayashi Sensei. But you can always, of course, like contact me for any kind of questions. But like most students who are in uh, Otani High Schools right now, um, we have three students that are in high, Otani High School right now from CIE, and one uh, Louis, um, Alex, not Alex here, but Louis, Alex, and Val, Val Valentina. Those are the three students that are in Otani right now, and then they really enjoy um, going to Otani High School. So you, you should be um, happy about your high school. You should be yeah pleased about this high school. They are really good high school. And the first day, do you, Kamasan, do you want to explain about the first day in Otani? Sure. Um, so we are still waiting for information from Hayashi Sensei um, about uh, those details. But last year, uh, the first day uh, we went to school, we had a bit of an orientation. Uh, people got fitted for their uniforms. Um, 
uh, let's see. And that that was like before actually going in class, by the way, that was just meeting the principal and so on. Um, and then the first day, well, before you get your uniforms, because they'll they'll take measurements and everything for your uniforms at Otani. Um, and by the way, the CI does not provide funds for those. And I think the uniforms are about $300 maybe around there. Um, but we have to confirm. Um, some schools have older uniforms that they can lend out, but Otani, I'm pretty sure, will give you an opportunity to buy your own. Um, but in any case, uh, you'll get fitted for your uniform, but the uniform won't be ready right away. So in the interim, you'll be asked to wear uh, like a white collared shirt and khaki pants or dark blue pants or a dark blue skirt, uh, if I remember correctly. But again, I'm waiting for information from Hayashi Sensei about that. Uh, also, you might be asked to do uh, uh a little bit of a speech to your homeroom class. We're waiting for information about that as well. Um, let's see, Otani has a school store. I can tell you that. So you can like buy snacks and so on. I don't remember if they have a, a cafeteria. I think they do, but again, they waiting for information cafeteria. about that. Okay, great. Um, and then uh, uh, what was I gonna say? Um, train, train, uh, transportation. A CI also um, asks you to, uh, purchase your own transportation pass. And that can be up to about $300 uh, as well. Um, it's $300, I think, for three months, approximately. Um, but again, waiting for information. Once we know your homestay family's location, then we can tell you what your transportation cost will be. Um, anything else to add, Sayaka-san, about Otani? And if you have questions uh, about that, the schools, we can come back to that at the end, by the way. So anything else to add, Sayaka-san? One thing that I don't know is that Otani started giving, I mean, providing this Japanese language class. And mm -hmm. so it's three, uh, it's like a, they haven't really decided on the schedule yet. So that's the one thing that I cannot tell you how often they will have the Japanese class because they were still working on like kind of arranging the Japanese class because that's what they started last year. And then that's kind of new things for Otani, but they now have the Japanese class so the international students have like a, something to kind of count on like when they were like kind of having problems in Japanese um, I mean, like a normal, like regular classes, it's all in Japanese. And so a lot a lot of times the international students have had time like listening to the uh, instructions in Japanese. So they decided to give uh, language classes in Otani, but it's kind of new. So they are still like kind of arranging and then they don't have that set schedule yet in Otani. <laughs> Great, thank you. And we'll give you some information, some helpful tips, tips about how to best navigate your experience in a school in Japan where we really are likely to not understand all of it right away, or maybe ever. Um, okay, Ritsumei Kan. So same kind, whoops, sorry. All right, S same thing. Sayaka-san, if you don't mind. Yeah, so Ritsumei Kan, um, Alex and Anna those two are going to Rismek on Uji. <laughs> and this school is a very, very um, beautiful campus. <laughs> and it's kind of a little bit far away from the uh, center of Kyoto city. So it might not be the most convenient location, but uh, it's the campus is beautiful. You will love the campus and then they have very good facilities. Um, so two students are in Ritsumei Uji right now, Christian and Queen. Those two boys are in uh, Ritsumei Uji, And they um, provide uh, rental uniforms. So you do not have to buy uniforms. They will give you the uniforms for, even from the first day. For some people like Christian, Christian is kind not kind of very, very tall. So he didn't have a uh, right size uniform on the first day, but uh, regularly, I mean, they, they they should have the uniform for the first day. So 
uh, for Anna and Alex. I don't think you guys are that tall. Like Christian is like 193 or 195 like cent centimeters, which is like a uh, I don't know in inch in like a feet inch. I'm not sure, but yeah, that's very tall. So. Uh, so he couldn't really have the uniform on the first day, but like, you know, you should have the uniform from the first day. And then they have like cafeteria and everything that you need within the campus. So. Yeah, great. Okay, uh, thank you for that. One yeah. thing that and they, the Ritsumekanuji is the only school that requires to have um laptop computer. So. If you don't have one, then I think you need to prepare. It's like an inexpensive one is fine, but the Ritz Mecca Uji needs a laptop computer. Excellent, thank you. Right, and same thing for uh, Ritz Mecca in terms of, uh, you know, you might be asked to uh, make a presentation the first day in your homeroom, et cetera. Uh, okay, so uh, let's see. Next one, we'll talk a little bit about homestay. Um, I just talked with my homestay mom uh, the other day. She's 90. I'm still in touch with my homestay family. I hope that you all also have a, an amazing time with your homestay family. We are going to give you lots of information during orientation, uh, information about, uh, you know, things to expect, maybe some helpful tips, stuff like that. Um, Homestay families can range from like an older couple that are empty nesters to a young couple with no kids yet, anywhere in between. Um, we've had homestay families that have, uh, you know, again, no kids, lots of kids, pets, you know, no pets, lots of pets. Um, some homestay families uh, ha are people that return are returnees, they themselves uh, studied abroad, you know, again, it runs the gamut, but all of them are wanting to welcome you into their homes and are looking forward to having a good relationship with you. Um, oh, as I said, why they host, maybe they uh, were returnees by uh, themselves. Maybe they um, have kids that are interested in studying abroad at some point and they want to try to see what the experience is from this side so they feel more comfortable sending their kid uh, abroad sometime in the future. They just may be people that are interested in international stuff. Um, they will provide uh, your own room. You'll get your own room. It may be Japanese bed, uh, tong, or it may be a Western bed. Um, they will provide uh, two meals a day, uh, breakfast and dinner. Uh, you're responsible for buying your own lunch. Um, each family will have Wi-Fi uh, and we hope, uh, that they provide a, a a very lively environment in which you can use lots of Japanese and get to know them. But I do want to say that it's kind of a two-way street. Uh, we're asking you to be very engaged with your homestay family as well. And what you'll gain, what do you think? Tell me what you're really ex excited about for your homestay family. What do you expect to get out of it? Really good food, hopefully. <laughs> okay. Um, like better language capabilities. Uh, learning about the culture. Someone who I can easily ask questions to. Okay, excellent. Again. You knocked that out of the park. You're right on all of those things. That's great. And for me, my one of the things that my homestay family and my friends that I still have from way back when uh, uh, provide to me is when I go back to visit, I always have a place to stay. So that's that's great. Um, you where you'll live, uh, you may be placed in the city of Kyoto two bus stops away from school, but chances are that's not going to happen. Um, you could be placed up to 90 minutes away from your school, door-to-door uh, -door commute. And I just wanna give you a heads up about that, but that is not atypical in Japan to spend a lot of time commuting. Um, 
you get to live in Japan. You're not just a visitor. And so that is one way in which you may feel like, wow, yeah, I really live in Japan. I'm commuting along with all these other students to school. And you can take advantage of uh, the train time to listen to podcasts, to study, whatever. Um, but in any case, uh, you might live in an apartment. You might live in a more traditional house. You might live in some more modern, uh, might be small, might be big. You know, again, runs the gamut. Uh, but you will have your own room. And uh, one of you mentioned about learning more about the culture. Uh, as you probably know, there are similarities between Japanese culture and U.S. culture, but there are a lot of things that are different. And no place is that probably going to be felt more deeply than at home. And I really encourage you to take a look at this course. We'll share this um, PowerPoint with you later, but this is kind of an online course about what you might expect at a home state. Uh, it's, it's fabulous. I encourage you to take a look at it. Again, we'll also go through things at orientation time. Um, we are taking an overnight trip and a day trip. Uh, so the day trip is to Himeji Castle here. As Sayaka-san's been working hard at uh, arranging for some tour guides and so on here. Uh, and then, and that's pretty soon after you arrive. And then our overnight excursion will be the month after. And we'll get to, I hope, see Mount Fuji if it's nice. Uh, might see a little snow on there still. Um, but be, it, we'll be doing some outdoor activities. And this will be, by the way, with the um, the overnight excursion will be with the high school students that are currently here. So you get to hang out with everybody. Um, oh, so I just happened to say that. OK. And uh, speaking of traveling, a couple of things that you need to know. Um, CIE uh, encourages you to be in Japan for at least two months before you have any friends or family visit. And really, best case scenario is that they come at the end so you're familiar with Japan and you can tour guide them around. Um, yeah. Sorry, I got distracted by the post. Um, okay. And then uh, your own travel within Japan, I, uh, you cannot miss school for any kind of travel. It has to be within 100 kilometers of your homestay. And if it's uh, over that, or even if it's uh, within the 100 kilometers, but you're staying overnight somewhere, you need prior approval. And that approval has to include your, uh, your legal guardian's permission as well. And uh, you have to travel with somebody that's 25 years, or at least 25 years old. And it could be uh, oh, by the way, if you're with your homestay family, um, they uh, if it's if it's just a short uh, trip, you don't have to fill out the thing. But even if you're with your homestay family, if I'm not mistaken, you still have to fill out the form if it's over 100 kilometers. Um, OK, and then uh, just traveling by yourself, by the way, um, again, if it's a short distance, that's allowed. But anything over 100 kilometers, you cannot do by yourself. Um, oh, and I mentioned about the paperwork. Um, health and safety. Obviously, this is uh, priority number one for CIE. Uh, if you need to go to the doctor, please talk with your homestay family. They uh, have been alerted that that might come up, but please do let us know. Um, you all are going to be enrolled in something called INEXT. If you're not enrolled already, what INEXT is, it's a travel insurance. So, for example, if you're like, wow, I, you know, I haven't gone to the dentist for a while. I think I'm going to go to the dentist. INEXT won't cover that. But if you uh, develop strep throat and you need to go to the doctor or something like that, INEXT will cover it. Now, it's a reimbursement. I can't remember if I put that on the next bullet point, but it's a reimbursement type of thing which means you have to pay out of pocket, you save the receipts, and then you can submit those for reimbursement uh, by INEXT. If I'm not mistaken, INEXT still sends out a physical check uh, to your home address. So you yourself will not get that money back, but you, the money will go to your uh, legal guardians. Um, if the, we, knock on wood, we've never had this. Uh, but apparently INEX will cover if you um, have fees incurred by trip cancellation. Uh, if you lose your luggage, for example, they can help cover some of the um, reimbursement for buying new clothes, et cetera. 
and then filing a claim, you go to the iNext website and your uh, legal guardians uh, can fill out a claim. Again, they'll need the paperwork. Um, so you'll have to be in charge of getting the paperwork to them. And if you uh, have something stolen or you lose something, there's also uh, limited coverage for that. Um, you do need to file a police report in order to um, qualify for review of whether or not that uh, will be covered. Uh, phone and wallet, by the way, are not covered, but other things are, like your bicycle, for example. Uh, and then here's the link for the claims. This will also be in the policy information that you get. Um, other health and safety things, crime rate in, rate in Japan, extremely low. You might all know that already. It doesn't mean that things don't happen, though. Um, again, we're going to go over um, ways to, to mitigate those risks at orientation. Um, but honestly, if any parents are there in the background listening, rest assured that Japan is a very safe place to send your child. Okay, some expectations uh, to quickly go over. Um, we do expect full participation in everything. So that means, uh, you know, the overnight excursion. I mean, why wouldn't you want to? But um, participation in class, participation in school activities, et cetera. If you do need to miss school because you're sick, again, let your homestay family know and also make sure you let CIEE know. Um, kind of stating the obvious, drugs, alcohol not allowed. Um, you have to follow local laws. You can't say, well, I'm an American. I didn't know better. If you're busted for shoplifting in Japan, you're busted here. And you, there's no uh, there's no recourse for you to say that you're not Japanese. Therefore, you don't have to follow the law. Um, emergency notifications. I mentioned about this before. Uh, we do have a system that if there's an earthquake, for example, we'll send out a notification to confirm your safety. Also, the city of Kyoto, they just ran uh, an emergency, uh, just an alert uh, on, on March 11, just to tell people, uh, you know, to make sure people knew about the notifications and remind them, hey, do you have an emergency kit? Stuff like that. So if you get something on your phone, you should pay attention to it. Um CIE has a, a discipline system. You know what? We we expect that everybody is going to do great, but we need to give you this heads up. Um, if you're engaged in something that you shouldn't be doing, uh, for example, skipping class or uh, uh, so now, uh, bullying people, uh, intentionally just causing problems, we'll give you a warning. First thing, there's a, a verbal warning. Second thing, there's a written warning. If that doesn't work, then you go on probation. And worst case scenario, you, you, you are asked to leave the program. We've never had to ask any HSA student to leave the program, knock on wood. Um, it, skip to dismissal in certain cases. For example, if you uh, are drinking, if you are doing drugs, that means you're gone. If you commit a crime in Japan, that means you're gone. Um, if you start having, for example, suicide, suicidal ideation, and we feel like you are going to be best cared for, uh, for a mental health situation, or if you have a physical health situation that we can't help you with in Japan, then you, we would ask you to go back to the state so you can get the best care that you need. And um, then another thing is we have a monthly check-in every month. Sayaka-san will send you a link to a form. You just tapity tapity fill in the form. It asks about school, life with your homestay family, um, what's going great, what questions you might have. That's required. And then uh, the following week, uh, you have a, a video chat like this with Sayaka-san just so she can follow up with you. Um, it's kind of, I, I admit, it seems like a lot, like every month, oh my God, I, j I don't have anything to report. No news in that way is kind of good news, but we need to um, confirm that everything is okay. Um, this is also written in your contract. Okay, so getting on to pre-departure tasks. Um, this is a QR code. Again, you'll get this um, uh, orientation, this uh, slideshow later, but um, you need to register. Uh, sorry, I got out of order. First, um, you can register with STEP. This is a government program that um, 
it's not like they're tracking you. They're not spying on you. But if there's a big natural disaster in Japan, for example, then the um, State Department can reach out and make sure that you're okay. This is optional, but we recommend it. Okay, going back to the QR code, visit Japan web. Uh, this is not required to come into Japan, but I want to say it's nearly required for CIE because it'll make entry into Japan much easier. Um, if you register on here, then you can put in your um, your name, your passport number, et cetera. And then when you arrive in Japan, you just have to show the QR code. You don't have to fill out the paper copy and it's much, much faster. And as it says here, it'll ask for your address. You don't have to put your homestay address on there. You can go ahead and put the center address because that's where, uh, you know, you're staying in a hotel the first night. If they need to contact you for anything, they would contact you through us. You can also put the CIE phone number. Um, all right, and here's the address. Uh, some things that you need to do before you leave in just a month's time is make sure that you talk with your guidance counselor about the implications for credit and graduation. CIE does not offer credit. The schools that you go to, they, they will not give you credit. Um, they will generally provide a list of classes that you took. Um, and so make sure that you're in touch with your school prior to arrival. And then once you arrive and you know your classes and so on, you can follow up with more um, chatting with your guidance counselor. Um, money matters. Alert your bank that you're coming so that your debit card doesn't get flagged as being uh, used suspiciously. Um, Debit card is what you need. You also can have a credit card, but a prepaid like gift card does not work because those don't work in um, ATMs. You have to have a card that is associated with a U.S. bank account. If you just come with a credit card, you can access cash with a credit card, but that basically is a loan and you have to pay a high interest rate. So debit card is definitely the way to go. Um, the other thing that's really handy, by the way, about a debit card is if you start getting low on funds, then you just ask somebody to put money into your account in America, and then you can access those a couple days later. Um, research your funds needs means, for example, go online and see how much does it cost if you're a fast food person and you want to know how much is it going to cost for like a, a set meal at Moss Burger, you can go on and you can look at how much that costs. If you're thinking that when you're in Japan, you want to buy a Japanese uh, Nintendo set or something, go ahead and look online. That will help you determine how much spending money you will need. I think probably average amount of spending money people spend maybe now $100 a month, $200 a month. It really it, it depends on the person. Um, okay, make arrangements for a data plan. You have a couple options for this. One is if your phone company allows you uh, to use an international plan, you can do that if you want. It tends to be more expensive, um, but you need to be able to make and receive phone calls in and from Japan. I'm not a tech expert. I'm certainly not a cell phone expert. It's uh, uh, one thing that I ask you all to do with your family is research your options, by the way. I don't want to tell you this is the best way and then uh, find out that it's wrong. But that said, if you do decide to get a Japanese SIM card, um, in all the research I've done, Sakura Mobile seems to be the best option. Uh, some of the other companies, you try to sign up for a SIM card and you sign up and you start using it and then you get kicked off because you're under 18. Um, Sapura Mobile will allow under 18 people to have a SIM card, but the uh, legal guardian needs to go online and fill out a permission slip. Don't waste, wait until the last minute to do this. Please do it ahead. Sapura Mobile is one company that I believe will send a physical SIM card to your house in America if you want to do it that way, or you can have it sent to uh, the uh, your home. Uh, the, you can have it sent to the CIA center, actually. So, uh, Sayaka-san, did you have something that you wanted to add? I thought I saw your hand. Okay. No. All right. But do your research, please, before coming to Japan. The ideal situation is that when you get to Japan, um, if you don't already have your plan, 
Again, you can have your SIM card sent to the CIE center. We keep it for you. You pop it in your phone during orientation. We do the tech check. You're good to go. As far as I know, I don't think they can use the uh, center address to be shipped. The SIM card. That, from Sakura Mumbai. That, you know what? That's right, because thank you for that, because uh, it has to be signed for. That's right. Um, so in that case, you have to do you you have to have it sent to your homestay family, I believe. Or, um, mm -hmm. or the one more, one more thing is it's like uh, there's a Kyoto Tower uh, office. That's the only right. place that you can be sh you can send the SIM card so that we have to go in and pick it up. And then that's a few students have done that. And so I know where the office is so I can take you guys once you get here. Thank you so, for that reminder. Yeah. Or you yeah. can now, yeah, might be able to pick it up at the airport. I'm not sure, but right, probably right, right. at Thank the Kyoto yeah, Tower office is probably the best way to pick it that's up. That's right. Right. Okay. So, Sayaka san, let's you and I confirm about that and then get back to the students. Okay. Thank you for that reminder. Um, okay. So, uh, please um, join uh, WhatsApp and then uh, link up with us on WhatsApp so that we can be in touch with you. For example, when you land in Kyoto, Kyoto uh, when you land in Kansai, they have Wi-Fi, free Wi-Fi at the airport, so you can hop on Wi-Fi and send a text to Sayaka-san and I to let, uh, Sayaka-san and me to let us know that you're there. This is my phone number in Japan, and Sayaka-san's phone number is this. Again, you'll get this slide show later. Um, you should have uh, gotten an invitation to Canvas already. Have you have you gotten that? Y'all are in Canvas already, right? No? Okay. Oh, right. I'm sorry. Canvas is not used for the HSA orientation. That's right. I need to make arrangements for you all to get an invitation to Canvas, which I will do. Uh, so accept that invitation, please, when you get it. Canvas is a uh, we'll put the newsletter up on there. There's handy information about fun restaurants. Um, you can access forms like the travel uh, form and stuff like that. Oh, which I just said, okay. And there's a discussion forum. So if you think like, oh, I really want to go, you know, get okonomiyaki. Does anybody have a suggested place? You can do that on Canvas as well. Of course, you'll probably make a line group with each other too. But anyway, there's that. Um, packing uh, recommendations. Um, think ahead about what you want to bring, go ahead and make that list and then keep revising it. Pack light, please. Kyoto is a big city. Uh, you can get anything that you need here. You will wear a uniform to school, so you don't need a whole lot of clothes. You're going to find things that you want to buy here, so pack light. Basically, I just tell everybody, nobody cares that you're wearing the same outfit, you know, once a week in rotation because everybody else is doing the same thing. Um, if you have any prescription medication, you need to get permission for those. Um, you can, sorry, you go online and you go to uh, the Japanese Ministry of Health website and it tells you how to apply for permission to bring your prescriptions in. Um, again, there's various prescriptions that are allowed, various prescriptions that are not allowed, some of the allowed ones require the paperwork. So I'm not going to go into a whole list because I don't want to misdirect you or forget something. So please check on your own. iNext insurance card, make sure you have that. Um, gifts for your home stay, family. Uh, it's the thought that counts. You don't have to do anything super extravagant, but things that are really nice for your home stay, family. Thank you, uh, Rachel. Um, Things that are really nice for your homestay family are things that have a story. So, for example, maybe you're an artist, so you do a painting for your family. Um, maybe you play an instrument, so you make a recording for your family. Uh, if your hometown is known for, like, Seattle, uh, uh, Seattle, 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 oh, no, San Francisco is Ghirardelli Chocolates. So, you know, maybe you think about something local that has a story. Generally speaking, it's really nice to have something for your homestay family as a whole, like something that they can display in their house and then something individual for each person. Again, it doesn't have to be extra extravagant or expensive. And then once um, you have the information about your homestay families, you can tailor what you get for people according to their uh, what you know about their hobbies and so on. And I forgot to ask Sayaka-san if you have any updates 
about the status of homestay findings? Yes, I just got the email from the, our homestay agency, and then they said that they have found host families for everyone except Stella. I'm sorry, Stella. I have they haven't found the one host family yet for Stella, but everybody else have the host family. But I, I don't have the profiles yet. So as soon as I receive the profiles, I will send it to you guys. But Stella, you have to wait a little bit longer so by end of this week i will send the profiles to all other three students okay excellent thank you okay um all right so oh i already talked about that talked about that oh games yeah if you take a game as a gift for the whole family that's like a win-win situation because not only do they have a fun game to play uh, but you get to play it together, and it's a good way to connect. Food is good, but no, you cannot bring meats. You can't bring cheeses. You can't bring things like that. Um, but yeah, local food is always good. If you bring food and it's for the whole family, have something that's individually wrapped. For example, you don't want to bring one of those big Hershey Symphony bars that you just put on the table and cut a piece off. You would bring things that are like a bag of fun size Snickers or something that everybody can reach in and get their own. Um, you do need a computer. Again, if you go to need to make on, most people have a laptop anyway, but you need an outlet adapter. If your um, a cord is a three prong in Japan, they just have two prongs. So easier for you to go ahead and pick a couple of these up uh, in the States rather than have to scramble to get them once you get to Japan. Okay. Almost done here. So quick heads up about things in Japan. Here's a photo. Here's a photo to drive home these points. Japan tends to be conservative in dress. You see they're dressed, you know, not in spaghetti straps. Uh, this was at the beginning of summer. So, you know, I mean, there's a weather consideration as well, but they tend to be conservative. Uh, you know, your uh, rock t-shirt from your favorite band that's all ripped up and stuff might be your favorite t-shirt ever but you're not going to be wanting to wear that out, out in the community. Um, short skirts, I mean, you do see them, but uh, it, again, tends to be more conservative. Pajamas, please wear pajamas. Uh, just sleeping in your underwear in Japan, not a thing, <laughs> okay? Uh, Japanese people tend to be indirect. We'll talk a lot about this during orientation. It's also covered in that um, course that I shared a link with you earlier. Um, but you, we will, you will need to learn how to negotiate conversations sometimes with Japanese people. They won't tell you necessarily, "Hey, would you turn your music down?" They'll imply, "Listen, you know, wow, those are really nice speakers. They really blast music, don't they?" What they mean is, turn them down. Um, making friends can take time. Uh, when you get to school, you'll you'll be kind of a, a a novelty at some in some ways, and people will want to talk with you. And then it it kind of settles up into like a little bit of a an uncomfortable time sometimes because your friends at or you know your classmates at school they don't quite know what to talk about. They don't know how well you speak Japanese. You're not quite sure you know how to approach people. It can take time, but being friendly is always a, a surefire way to start to get to know people. If you don't make friends right away, though, just keep trying. Don't panic. Um, you might have a long commute. I mentioned that earlier. And lastly, Japan is freaking hot in the summertime. Be prepared for that. Bring your sunscreen. Bring your good American deodorant. I'll tell you, Japan is wonderful in a lot of ways, but deodorant, definitely lacking. <laughs> they, it, just, it just doesn't have the punch. Um, all right, I think that's it. You can uh, see more about uh, CIE by following these uh, social medias. And lastly, questions. All right, thank you. I tried to talk as quickly as possible. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and stop sharing the slideshow so we can see each other well um, and go ahead and throw out your questions. Uh, so hopefully we can see each other. <coughs> Yeah, okay, Caroline, great. Question. Yeah, please knock yourself out. Um, I have a question about like school tuition fees. Do we know about that yet? Sayaka san, can you uh talk about that? Tuition fee? Um, yeah. Uh, 
as far as I know that the um the US people should probably told you already or I yeah we I don't know anything about like the what because you are not paying anything to the directly to the school. You are only paying to the CIE. So anything about the fees you should know from the US people. So yeah, as a local, like we are paying to the school, but we are not getting any money from you guys, no. Yeah. Thank you for the only great thing, question. Yeah, great only answer. thing that you have to buy is like some kind of like maybe textbooks and stuff like that, little things, but not anything like tuition that you are not um paying to pay in Japan, no. Yeah, great question and great answer. Thank you. Anything else? Okay. Yeah, I have one more thing. Um, I know you guys said for like a temporary uniform we have to bring for like the first day or two while we wait for a normal uniform. Do we have shoes that we'll have for that? Because I know sometimes in school you have different shoes and like outdoor shoes. Yes, you will have to buy the indoor shoes, but for the first day you will only you will have to wear like uh, guest slippers, which is kind of hard to walk around with the slippers. But for the first day you have to live with the slippers. Yeah, my my uh, I actually have a pair of socks that have uh. Like they have a little non skid thing on the bottom. And so when I visit a Japanese school, if I know I'm going to wear those um, slippers, I wear the socks with the non slip stuff on the bottom because the slippers, when you're trying to go up and down the stairs with these, there's a reason they're called slippers. Okay. They like fly off your feet if you're not uh, used to them. So if you happen to have a pair of socks with non slip skid things on the bottom, bring those. Any other questions? Hopefully I covered lots of things, but I can I'm got lots of time to answer questions for you. No one. <laughs> awesome. That's great. <laughs> OK, well, if if anything comes up later, please feel free to contact us. As Sayaka san mentioned, you can also be in touch with your um, U.S. Uh, uh, contacts. Uh, yeah, Sayaka, and do you have anything that you want to add at the end here? No, really. I think it uh, to add to the uh, Ritsume Kanwuji, like a high school. I think that I told I forgot to tell you guys. Tell you guys that um, Ritsume Kanwuji has Japanese classes. And mm. it's three days a week. So you will have a Japanese class three days a week by uh, Mori Moto Sensei. She's a female um, Japanese teacher. You will have a language, Japanese language class three days a week. Great. OK, I think I saw another hand. I'm, I'm multitasking. I'm actually looking to see if I can find any information about the pickup spot for Sakura Mobile right now. But anyway, please. Uh, Carolina, ask your question. Is it um, possible to participate in like school extracurriculars, like athletics and clubs? Sorry, Kosen, do you mind? You mean like a school clubs? Yes, of course. <laughs> yeah, there are a bunch of like choices to choose from. So depending on what you are interested in, you can choose the clubs that you are. I think for right now, I think um Valentina she's in the volleyball club and uh, Louis I forgot where she is but the, most of them are in like a, a English club too they are part of the English club as well as like the sports club that they were interested in so depending on the schools and depending on you are interested but most of the schools have something that, that you'll be interested in so you just pick one that you are interested in I think that's a way uh, for you to make friends, make Japanese friends. Excellent. And work on your language skills, too. And, and you know, you could pick something like kendo or, you know, uh, flower arranging that you are not likely to have a chance to do uh, outside of Japan. Um, yeah, so thank you for jogging my memory, uh, Sayaka-san. You can pick up Sakura mobile cards at the airport in Kansai. 
So you just, as you go through and, and go through the process of ordering, you just choose that as your pickup spot. Definitely that would be the recommended place, way to go. Other questions or other, uh, anything from CIE staff that you might want to add? Well, Karen, I just have a quick question. Oh, sorry, Anna, you were going to say something. It's just related to the activities that okay. you said that I know that they are offered through school, but I was wondering, do they, so the students pay the school directly or are those offer, they, and, and how much are those more or less? Depends they, what it is. There are not a many activities offered by schools, but usually um, the activities are not like there's they don't have fees, but uh, there is like a, some kind of school trips that sometimes the schools offer. And then those school trips you do have to pay. And it, that really depends on the kind what kind of school trips that is, but something but you don't really have to join the school trip. So yeah. it's yeah. kind of their That's choice optional. whether they yeah. want to try join us. Yeah, school trip, but it could be like, uh, yeah, it, in US dollars, I'm not sure. It's like yeah, it's okay. $1,000, I guess, okay, <laughs> or something yeah. like that. Or yeah, because they're usually like longer, that. right? Like, yeah, yeah, it's like, like a, a few days, three, yeah, three days, two nights, three days kind of thing, like usually, yeah. but it's, yeah. yeah, depending on the schools for. Okay, but great. It's you know, usually I was about something, extracurricular. yeah, something that the second year students go to. So you might not have have any school trip for, yeah, at all, because most of them uh, will be placed in the first year um, in high school. So you're probably not gonna have a school mm -hmm. trip, but yeah. Okay, thank you. Great. And and just to follow up on that, there's not a cost usually for joining a club, but you might. You know, if you join Kendo, for example, then you need to, if the school doesn't have equipment for you to borrow, then you might have to buy some things. Kendo would be very expensive, actually. But, um, you know, uh, there there may be costs involved for equipment or art, supply, art supplies, for example. If you join art club, then you might have to purchase your own supplies. Anna, did you have a question? Uh, yeah, for the host family portfolios, how much information do we get? Like, do we get information of pets, of siblings? Yep, all that kind of stuff, yes. Okay. <laughs> yeah, very, very brief um, information about their hobbies, by the way. It says, you know, like, yeah. host mom likes gardening and baking or something. Wow, that was really stereotypical. That's because I like those things, so. Yeah, so um, basic information like uh, how many kids or, or if they have a pets and uh, stuff like that. It's not that much, but uh, I think uh, all that stuff that you need to know, I think you will know in a post, post family profile. And we'll be, I, oh, oh, sorry, I was just going to say, and we encourage you to reach out to them once you get that information. I don't know if that was already said, but that's really like a great way to just get to know them. Yeah, they will have an email address so that you can yeah contact your host family and then ask them questions after you get the profile. Stella, you don't really have the profiles yet, but like yeah, I will ask them. I mean, for you know to give me the profile as soon as possible. Cool. Anything else from anybody? Excellent. Looking yeah. forward and to seeing y'all. And I'll add to hi, just hi, to... hi Mand waving next to Alex. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just I'll just reiterate like we are on track for the COE stuff. So I know it can get a little stressful as we get closer to departure, but like yeah. I I know as we get closer it can be stressful. Just know we're all on track. And that I haven't looked at um flights yet, but I'm hoping everyone has their flight stuff booked. So if oh. you're one of those people that doesn't, double check, get that done. And those are like my last few, just reminders. Great, okay. You you all should be in time for cherry, seeing some cherry blossoms. They're, 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 they might be fleeting, they might not be hanging around too much. If the weather continues like this for a while, then who knows, maybe they'll just be blooming when you get here. But 
Uh, probably uh, end of end of March is when they'll start blooming, and you should be able to see some some blossoms here and there. It won't be full anymore, probably, but so that's exciting. And then and then you get to deal with rainy season in the summer. So that's one thing that I didn't mention about during uh, when I was talking about packing. But if you have access to like a waterproof backpack or um, what you know, you can get rain boots here. Um, but just thinking ahead of commuting back and forth in the rain, in steady rain for a few weeks. Yeah, might want to think of that. And uh, umbrella, by the way, Japan umbrella, Japanese umbrella is top notch. If there's something you definitely want to throw in your suitcase, like a foldable one, go ahead. But you can also get a really nice umbrella here. Okay, cool. I'm, I'm, I'm done. Unless anybody else has anything else. And let's let's call this this party over. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank All you. Right. See you soon.